Hi, I'm Lucy Towers, reporting for thefishsite.com, and I'm here with William Van Der Eek, who is the CEO of Tomalgi. Well, to my, to my mind, the future aquaculture is in, in algae production. The algae take up about in, in hatchery. Uh, well, there are there, separate several areas within uh, aquaculture where algae are needed. What we're focusing on is basically on the juvenile stage, so the hatchery hatchery stage. And within the hatchery stage, there's a, the uh, the early stage uh, production feed. Uh, people need to use algae in order to uh, to come through the net next production phase. The limiting factor in uh, in hatchery production is actually the use of algae in the early stages. If you look at the total hatchery uh, production cycle, it takes for shrimp, that's one of our first markets we're focusing at, roughly about 21 days. Of that 21 days, roughly 16, 15, 16 days, the animals are actually fed on, let's say, more or less uh, compound feeds, and I will also call Artemia as, let's say, a manufactured feed, which is fully controlled a product which can be used throughout the production cycle. The first couple of days, let's call it three to four days, which are called an OPI to Zoe 3 phase, there is little to no alternatives but use live algae. The live algae are grown on site in a quite a big area of the market. There are also regions where they don't have access to live algae. Um, but live algae can have an enormous variability in production. Uh, cultures are, are not very stable, they can crush. And if there's no production of larvae, of algae, there's also no possibility to feed the larvae, and hence the, the, the result of the, uh, of the uh, of production will actually go down because people, the, the larvae will not survive. I mean, have you found it to be commercially viable? Well, yes, it definitely is yeah. commercially viable. A, a, lot of, a lot of actually, the, we, we sell at pretty, pretty steep prices, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but that's also because it's an ex extremely uh, valuable part of the process. If you look at the operational cost of a hatchery in, in, in the total OPEX, which is used roughly, I, I calculate with 25%, but estimates go from 30 to up to 60% of the operational costs are actually incurred by the production of algae for that critical phase. I've heard, I've heard figures today of, of, of larger operations. They say half my people in my hatchery operation are basically busy with the algae cultivation, and that is extremely big. Yeah. And what would you say to farmers who at the moment are making their own feeds uh, from algae in a, a much simpler way? What is the benefit of using your products as a tailored feed? Well, the, 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 the first of all, uh, we need. We, first of all, there's, there's um, uh, the, the biggest benefit they will have is that we we can supply a continuous uh, uh, quality control batch. That batch is the same whether they use the batch in January or whether they use it in July. That batch is being produced under strict quality control regulation that we actually put upon ourselves. But there's a certain uh, uh, certificate of analysis, there are certain criteria which we put into, in, into the product. Uh, these, these quality measures, they're, they're open. And um, we've also qualified for GMP Plus and for ISO 9001 certification, so the quality assurance is there. So batch release, continuous quality of the batch is the first, first parameter. Secondly, um, they'll, they'll understand that um, the fluctuation in, in, in quality which they do with their own product can actually have an enormous impact on the continuity of their production. And we're taking away that risk. So what people can now do is they start focusing what they should be focusing at, and that's the production of larvae and not the production of feed. Let us do the production of feed, let them do the production of the larvae. It's extremely rich in, uh, in a combination of, of materials. One of the crucial materials in that early stage is omega-3 uh, fatty acids. So it's the omega-3, it's the EPA and the DHA. We have both in our, uh, in our product. Both are there, which is pretty unique. Um, the other aspect, which is even, maybe even more important than the nutritional aspects, First of all, let me say the nutritional compound is is well balanced, and it it's actually uh, it's it matches what is being grown as large product by the hatchery owners themselves. 
But the other thing which is extremely important is the fact that the, 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 the species we grow is 100% ingestible, i.e. It, it can be taken up by the target animal, it has the right size, we cultivate it to the right size, and secondly it's, it's fully digestible, which means that it can be taken up, can be taken up by the gut, and the only thing which has been taken out again is, is a cell wall, and the cell wall is made out of silica, i.e. glass, so it doesn't give any pollution in the hatchery tank, and pollution, as you would know, would cause a lot of uh, bacterial contamination risks. Um, yeah, those are those are mainly the the, the, the important factors here. So, and um, do you have any take-home messages for the industry? L well, like like I said, the, the, our first intention is actually our first, our main intention is to focus on the uh, on the replacement of live algae currently being used in hatchery stages. I see algae as a, in general they can play an enormous role in replacing fish and fish meal and fish oils. Potentially not the way that we grow algae, we grow them phototrophically, i.e. using sunlight, and it's a very specific type of production. Uh, production levels are also restricted, but as I just mentioned, we also we spend a lot of care into the preservation and the ability to actually take it up. But there's an alternative way, and that's, that's uh, what we call heterotrophic algae, or algae through fermentation technology. Um, that could actually, you could then, then tailor EPA and DHA contents, and they can produce a lot more number, higher numbers than we do. Um, they can be then used as a compound into the compound feeds used in the grow out phase at a later stage. And there's a third, so then you're talking again microalgae being fermented, and there's a third group which is called by the macroalgae. Macroalgae, they also have very, uh, very good contributing uh, uh, materials. They can be used in compound feeds as well. So in general, the algae, as from start to the end, I can see an enormous potential taken up by algae in, in a more sustainable way of producing uh, feeds for aquaculture. Okay. Thank you very much, William.